Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Beyond the Bazaar. I'm your host, Arthur Temple. We got a great show for you tonight, folks. Pornographic actress Lisa Stars is in the studio. We're going to be talking to her about her new line of dolls, modeled after herself, which can be used both as sex dolls and voodoo dolls. Also with us tonight is Javier Gross, a man who claims to be in possession of a box containing the souls of three members of a Mexican military band that accompanied Santa Ana's troops during the Mexican-American War. We'll be hearing a live performance from them tonight, or at least the closest to live they can get. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you our current guest, who is sitting across from me now, Mr. Matura Vishakran. Thank you for having me, Arthur. My pleasure. Now, Mr. Vishakran... That's Master Vishakran. Of course, of course. I'm sorry, Master Vishakran. If you were to please tell our listeners in as little words as possible who you are and what it is that you do. I am. Uh, very, very clever, Master Vishakran. I, I didn't realize you would heed my words to such an extent. I guess I'll fill in the blanks for our listeners here. Master Vishakran is a nutritionist, yoga instructor, religious scholar, and the author of several books detailing his universal spiritual philosophy, which he has named Busha Vekherpa. Now, with a bit more detail this time, could you please explain to me a bit about this ideology of yours? What does it mean, this Busha Vekherpa? Well, those words are derived from an ancient Semitic language spoken even before the time of the Hebrews. It roughly translates to the correct path or the journey to righteousness. It is what I have decided to name the doctrine, but the term itself applies to a special form of incantation or meditation, so to speak. The process is fully explained in my book, The Art of Busha and You, Volume 1, available for $79.99 US dollars on my website. What I have found over years of research is that through a correct diet, mindset, and practice of the Busha meditation process, anyone, anyone and everyone can achieve enlightenment and salvation. You see, enlightenment and salvation are two sides of the same coin in that our salvation hinges upon our enlightenment. A society made of enlightened individuals is destined to survive based on that merit alone, and a society made of unenlightened individuals withers away like they have been for thousands of years. Fascinating. I've never thought about it like that before. Now, when you say salvation, what exactly are you referring to? Religious salvation of the soul or literal salvation from an approaching event? Perhaps the societal collapse, which you mentioned. Again, Art, there are two sides of the same coin. In order to unlock the barriers of the heavens, we must first build the key and unlock the barriers in our minds. Once the mind is unchained, it can do anything. You see, the three-dimensional world around you, and the easiest and fastest way to survive is to consider it as a reality, but the easiest and fastest way is rarely the best way. You could say it was purely by accident that we ended up getting stuck in this three-dimensional world. There has always been a constant stream of celestial visitors coming here from worlds far and wide. Once you activate your potential to communicate with these visitors, you will realize that there are no limits to what is possible. The only problem realizing it is that we too are visitors and that the physical body is but our vessel. And when did you realize this? What what exactly was it that led you to this conclusion? It came to me in the state of Busha while I was writing volume 1. In my dreamlike state, I had connected with one of my previous lives and saw myself walking through what was clearly and unmistakably the ancient gardens of Babylon. Then a great and majestic pelican around the size of an elephant swooped down from the heavens and landed beside me. When it opened its beak, he spoke what the truth that it told me I was a mere avatar of myself, the same way my body was an avatar for my spirit. It told me the spirit that my body contains is the same one that was in the vessel of Abraham and Moses and Zoroaster and Buddha and Krishna and the Bahalula and Muhammad and Haile Selassie and Joseph Smith and even L. Ron Hubbard. The list goes on, but you understand the point. The last thing he told me before I climbed onto his back and flew back into consciousness was that in order to attain enlightenment, I had to use the Busha to birth him, who was really just a version of me, into the three-dimensional world. Doing this, 
bringing him from my inner world to the outer world would be proof and testament that my body was and is the holy vessel. After this, it would be my duty to free the rest of humanity from itself, as I would do, and ride the wings of the pelican into salvation. Once I'm going to have to stop you there, Mature. You're going to have to explain yourself. I am, but you're interrupting me, Arthur. Well, I had to. That's quite a claim you're making. I must admit it is an astonishing thing to hear, even given the nature of this show. I've never heard anyone... What you're saying is that you, you, Matura, had a dream where a pelican, a pelican told you that you were the reincarnation of almost every major prophet, deity, and messiah that even exists, and are going to lead us to rapture. And you believe this to be true? Now, how is some of this stuff even possible? Among other things, L. Ron Hubbard and Halle Selassie were alive during the same time. How can two bodies be vessels for a single spirit? Oh, no, you, you seem to have misunderstood me. Clearly. Among other things, it was not while dreaming. It was in a dreamlike state of meditation. A pelican did not tell me anything. It was a realization that came to me as a vision of a pelican. I wasn't told. I told myself. I realized it. This is how I know that it is true. What? H how do you know that it's true? Arthur, when the man is hungry, no one tells him. He realizes it. How does he know it's true? His mind and body inform him. Even if he has just eaten an amount that he knows is enough to satisfy him, if his mind and body inform him that he's not, he simply cannot choose to not be hungry. When two people fall in love, no one tells them. They realize it. How do they know they love each other? Their bodies and minds inform them. They attract each other. They yearn to form the physical and emotional connection. Even if it's two types of people, they would normally repulse each other. If the mind and body tells them the attraction is there, it simply is. They cannot ignore it. This is what Bhushava Kharpa is all about. You would know if you read my book. It's a way of reaching a state where you are more prone to your mind and body's information. Just like one realizes that they are hungry or in love, I realized that I could lead us all to salvation with the Busha. And... How, how do you plan on doing that? With the pelican, of course. I, I thought you said the pelican was part of a vision. You'll, you'll have to excuse me. This is all very confusing. Is it an actual thing or perhaps a concept? I'm, I'm afraid all this pelican talk is eluding me. I am the pelican. He is in my body and my mind. Once I bring him out to all the bodies and minds my body and mind has encountered, which is to say, once I birth him into the world, you will understand. It's the Holy Trinity, like you learned in the first day of Sunday school, Arthur. It is all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am the pelican. The pelican is part of what you would call my imagination, but he is also separate from me. Now listen here. I allow a lot of things to happen and be said on my show here, but this sounds like absolute nonsense to me. It's one thing to believe in ghosts and voodoo, but what you're saying is that because you're some type of godhead, the fact you imagined a giant pelican makes that giant pelican exist? Absurd. Is it? Behold. can't even fit in this room. It's impossible for it to be here right now. Yet you see it in front of you, don't you? My dear listeners, if you could see what I'm seeing right now, there appears to be a giant pelican in the studio. Right now, right here, on Beyond the Bazaar. Can you get him to squawk for the listeners so they know it's real? Ah! 
There you heard it, folks. I could be going completely insane here, but that was the sound of a holy pelican, if I've ever heard one before. Of course, your mind and body tell you that he's here. Even if no one else knew that he was here, you would. Even if they all thought you were a lunatic, it would not matter, because you plainly cannot argue with the fact that the pelican is there. It is they who are insane, those who refuse to see. What other proof do you need? When you put it that way, I, I, I guess you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Messiah, the Miracle Man is real, and his name is Matura F. Vishakran. I'm afraid that's all the time we have tonight. The Art of Busha and You, Volume 1 through 7, in stores and available for ebook and Kindle now for only $79.99.